Alright, so now that we got a drawing laid down, let's go ahead and start laying on some paint. I've got my sketch. I'm going to name that sketch. Okay, and then we're going to make another layer. Uh, of course, we want to lock this because we don't want to accidentally paint on our sketch layer. That would not be good. I'm going to hit Control Shift N for a new layer, and we're going to call this uh, Paint. Okay. I'm going to press the B button, zoom in a little bit. Okay, so Paint layer should be underneath Sketch. And everything else is locked, so I'm only going to be painting on my Paint layer. And let's use kind of a typical brush. Where's my circle brushes? Okay, here we go. Okay, so Control A, delete. All right, Control B, deselect. Okay, so, so let's do some paint. Uh, first thing you need to do is you need to figure out your color palette. Luckily for us, since we're going to try to duplicate what they've done, I can just cherry pick or eye drop their colors. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this mode on normal. I want opacity and flow 100%. And uh, I'm going to turn this off for now. Okay. Um, I can hold. Now, when I have the. I press the B button for the brush. Now, if I hold down the Alt key, I can pick a color. Okay, so I can pick. I can. So I'll try to pick the most basic colors. Uh, we'll start with the bright ones. So here is bright green. Here is bright yellow for the hair. And here is olive. Okay, so now next to that we'll add the shadows. So let's add, so we have pink, and then of course this is the shaded version of pink. This is the shadowy part of it. Okay, so that goes for, our, that's our color palette. So we'll name the, rename this color palette. And we'll lock that layer. So let's go ahead and lock that. Control Shift N for a new layer, and we'll call this one Paint. And we'll put that underneath color palette. So the color palette's always on top. Now I'm going to basically I have my paint, press the B button for brush, and now I'm going to start painting my guy. Okay? So and then as I paint, I can basically just select and pick any color I want. So I got his hair. And actually the drawing's not completely finished, but I think for the sake of this lesson, we can go ahead and start working. So I'll paint his hair in behind his arm. And again, we're just going to work really rough. Okay. And just in general, to let you know, uh, it's easy to try to get caught up in details, but I try as hard as I can not to get caught up in details, especially in the beginning, because I find it's just not worth it, because those details are going to change. And so fussing over the details now is really a waste of time. So just do your work really roughly, just really quickly, and uh, you know just try to keep it moving. You can get worried about the fuss about the details later on. And obviously I'm using the brush uh, with the hard, right? So you have your hardness. I have the hardness all the way up. And also my image size. When I'm coloring, I like to use 300 dpi. So if you're not at 300 dpi, I highly suggest you move up. To the nice thing about pressing the Alt key is I can just kind of go back and forth. Another thing you can do, it's not necessary, but if you want to, what you can do is you can, you have two, color here, two colors here, right? So I could have yellow in the back, and I could have my face color in the front panel. And I press the X button, it flips those. See that flip right there? Let me change this to black so you can get a better idea. So yellow, black, black, yellow, yellow, black, black, yellow. And what that does is, let's say for instance, I'm working on his eyes, right? I'm going to turn this down a little bit. I can kind of go back and forth. Let's say I accidentally go over the line. Well, I just press X, and I switch to the other color. How to lay down some colors. Now, a cool thing I can do, since it's all flat colors right now, is I can select by color now. Because I don't know if you've noticed or not, but you do have this tool over here. It's called the Magic Wand. Okay, Magic Wand, and depends on how much tolerance you add, will select based on pixels of the same color, which is very convenient, right? And of course, uh, I can add zero tolerance. That means it's only going to pick absolute pixels. 
right? So you might have kind of halfway between pixels, it's not going to select those. But if I turn the tolerance up a little bit, it'll select a little more. So if I turn that up to 22, you'll see it, well, it's hard to see here, it's very crisp right now, but if it wasn't crisp, you'd see that it starts to select more and more pixels, the more and more tolerance it has. Cool thing about that is since I have that green selected, that means it's only gonna allow me to paint inside my selection, my current selection. And what this button here does is it makes everything else red so that you can see what's, what's allow, what you're allowed to edit at the time. So for instance, I could turn my brush up really big, turn my opacity really soft, and then what I could do is I could add a very soft highlight or shadow. Right? So if I do it in black, and let's say I turn my opacity down really low. I'll turn that opacity up a little bit more. So you see what happens there? It's only painting inside the dotted lines. And I could change this to overlay. You get this really nice shadow. See that shadow effect? Another way to do that, if you want, you can do There's a couple different ways to mask off your artwork. Um, one way to do it is to, let's see, make your selection, and then you can add a new layer, and then you can mask it, okay? And what that mask does is it makes a, it makes a mask based on that selection that you had, okay? Now, if you can cold control click any layer, it will select everything in that layer. Now, if I control click my sketch, it will select all of the sketch artwork. If I control select that mask, it will show you what that's masked off. And what that's done is now when I paint on this layer, it will only show up inside the white part of this mask. So for instance, I could draw a little shoelaces if I wanted. I could we'll do them in white. Overlay 50% or 60, 62. And I could basically, huh, it's not showing up. Let's do black. Still not showing up. Okay, we'll do my brush a little bigger. And let's try normal. Hmm. I wonder why it's not showing up. Okay, zoom in. Oh, that's why. Okay. So now I gotta you gotta be careful if you're selecting this square or this square. If you select this square, then you're gonna be painting your mask. If you paint this square then that's going to be your actual artwork for that square. Okay. So let's control, let's go back to our magic wand. I'm going to right click on this square, I'm going to uh, delete that layer mask. I'm going to select, go to my paint layer, select that particular color. And then I'm going to create, go to this layer, create a mask. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, mask. Go back to the art layer, and now I'm going to do my painting. And as you can see, it only shows up inside that mask. So if you do all the work to stay inside the lines, you don't have to do that work later on. So you only have to do it once, which is very nice, okay? So for those of you doing a lot of shading and stuff, that's, that's kind of useful. Uh, actually, to be honest, when I got more advanced painting, I just leave all my colors on the same layer. I stopped separating it into layers. And the reason for that is because I want it to be more like traditional painting. I don't like using all these tricks and stuff. But in the beginning, it is very useful, so that's why I wanted to show that to you guys. And it also gives you an idea of how to use masks and how to make your layers um, work with each other. Another thing you can do, I'm going to delete this layer is I have all my painting on this layer, right? Well, what I can do is I want to sometimes, if I add a fade to that, then it becomes hard to select that color again, right? Like, for instance, it's a little hard to select this now because it's got different colors contained within it. Well, to solve that problem, what I can do is I can create a new layer, and then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click between those two layers. 
And what that does is now, whatever I paint on this layer, it will only show up where there is artwork on this layer. So for instance, I haven't painted anything here, right? So even if I go to this layer and I paint right here, it's not going to show up. But if I paint right here, it will show up because there's paint, there's paint underneath it, right? For instance, if I go to my flat colors layer and then I erase some of it, it's going to erase this and it's kind of like erasing this because it's not going to show up if there's no artwork here. Does that make sense? So let's say I, I come in later on and I want to like fix, right? Well, it ends up, I can put all my shading on this layer and I can still keep this selectable layer down here. So real quick, I'll add some shading. Make this big. Normal, let's see. So I've added some shading. Right? And as you can see, even though I painted over the line, it doesn't show up over the line. And the cool thing is I can turn the shading off because it's on its own layer. And even though that shading is on, I can still come down here and select that color. Cool, huh? So why don't you guys try that? You go ahead and paint your piece and go ahead and add your shades and uh, you can just kind of play around with all the effects on the brushes, okay? So that concludes your intro to painting or laying down color.